Hi guys, this is uh, C.A. Balakrishna. In this video, we will be discussing case study number 10. Starting with MCQ number 1. See. With respect to the purchase and sale of plot, which was meant for a farmhouse by Mr. Darshan, who would be considered as Binamidar? Basically, in the case study, what happens is there is a particular person by name Mr. Darshan. He purchases some property in the name of his daughter in law. Okay. If he and the consideration is being paid by Mr. Darshan only, this particular case is not covered in the exception. Therefore, daughter in law of mr darshan will be treated as binami uh, binami dar and after purchasing the property in the name of uh, uh, daughter in law their family you know opposes for holding the property in her name thereby what mr darshan will do is he will sell the property that was purchased in the name of uh, daughter in law and he will realize some 2 crore rupees 2.4 crores i think he will realize of that amount 35 lakhs he will deposit into the bank account of his wife and balance 2.05 crores is deposited into his bank account now depositing of the sale proceeds into his into the bank account of his wife would also make his wife as Binamidar, thereby both wife of Mr. Darshan and daughter-in-law of Mr. Darshan will be Binamidars in respect of this transaction and the answer would be D. Both daughter-in-law and wife of Mr. Darshan would be considered as Binamidar. Hope that is clear. Next whether bcl can apply for initiation of corporate insolvency resolution plan against the specified gym equipment company basically this bcl is a company which supplies some material to gym manufacturers now against bcl in the case study carp was initiated okay CIRP was completed recently against BCL. Now, there is particular operational debtor. Okay. There is particular operational debtor to this BCL. That means BCL has supplied some goods to this operational debtor and he is not giving amount to BCL. Now, whether BCL can initiate CIRP against this operational debtor or not the answer is yes it can initiate carp even though carp has recently completed against bcl it can initiate carp against third party but it cannot initiate carp against its own self because it has recently completed carp uh, against BC bcl only thereby in the case study bcl wants to initiate carp against some third party who is gym man, uh, gym equipment manufa manufacturer the answer is bcl can initiate carp let us see here he says no the corporate debtor who underwent carp itself can't apply for initiation of carp against other corporate debtors no it can even though it has undergone carp it can initiate carp against another corporate debtors even in b he says no answer is that is not correct c also no that is not correct d would be correct yes bcl can apply for initiation of carp against the specified gym equipment manufacturer okay next under fema 1999 miss vanya for the financial year 2021 will be considered as basically in the case study this particular person miss vanya comes to India for pursuing sir uh, for pursuing her studies 
the period of studies is three years. Okay, after completing her studies, she will again return back to US. Now, in the preceding financial year, she has stayed in India for two sixty four days, which is more than one ninety two days. Now. to call a particular person as person resident in india he must have stayed in india for more than 182 days and he should have come to india either for carrying business or for vocation or for employment or for uncertain period here the period is certain and the reason why she has come is for studies which is not a specified purpose thereby miss vanya would be person resident outside india option b would be correct answer hope that is fine next with respect to project gvr gkpl is considered to be let us see for this we have to read the paragraph relating to it mm, yeah here it is basically there is a particular promoter by name abdl it has started a project by name gyan vihar residency okay now in this project there is particular real estate agent by name gkpl we have discussed that if real estate agent wants to sell any of the apartments he has to get registered uh, he has to get himself registered under rera but what happens is in this particular case gkpl has not obtained registration as agent as real estate agent under rera without obtaining registration what it has done is it has sold a particular plot flat in the apartment in this uh, residency okay in this uh, gvr in gyan vihar residency it has sold on 29th of september 2020 and by knowing this fact rera authority has given notice to real estate agent saying that you have you haven't registered with us and you have you know involved in selling particular apartment like this a notice was issued asking for explanation on 12th october 2020 after that rera has granted registration to this particular real estate agent on 15th october 2020 with effect from 12th october 2020 now in this case there is a default for a period of 13 days okay he sold the apartment without obtaining registration on 29th september 2020 and he has obtained registration with effect from 12th october 2020 the period of default is 13 days now the the penalty that would be levied is 10000 rupees per day it would be 130000 maximum of 5% of cost of the apartment if you calculate 5% of cost of apartment it would turn to be some mm, 6 lakh 50000 3 lakh 25000 5% of 65 lakh would be 3 lakh 25000 thereby penalty that would be levied is 1 lakh 30000 1 lakh 30000 or 3 lakh 25000 whichever is lower 1 lakh 30000 would be the penalty and gkpl is guilty of selling the apartment without without getting the registration let us see yes it is guilty liable to penalty of 130000 option a would be correct answer next identify which of the following reasons make the acquisition of flat in india by miss natasha in her and jay's joint name basically natasha is indian citizen but jay is not indian citizen he is uh, usa citizen I, i i think i don't exactly remember okay let it be however jay is not citizen of india basically natasha married mr jay and wants to purchase a property in india in the joint name of natasha and jay in this case provisions relating to joint acquisition of property in the name of 
uh, PROI will be applicable. If you read those provisions, it says that you can acquire the property in the joint name of a person who is not an Indian citizen, who is a PROI, provided the consideration must be paid through proper banking channels and you should have married such person and such marriage is in existence for a period of not less than two years. These conditions must be satisfied. Here if you see in the case study, uh, for the consideration some amount is paid by through bank and some amount for purchasing the property is paid by Mr. J through his contacts in India that is not through proper banking channels one condition is not, not satisfied and coming to the second condition if you see if you calculate the difference between the dates that are given in the case study it would be less than two years I'll show you mm. where is it Yeah, here, if you see, the marriage took place in India in August 2019, whereas the property was acquired in September 2020. If you calculate the difference between these two dates, it would be less than two years. Therefore, even the second condition is also not, not satisfied. Therefore, they have contravened the provisions. The same has to be answered by you. One second. See, here he says invalid because neither of the owners of the property is resident in India. No, it is not correct. Invalid because two years have not been elapsed since the marriage of her and Jay. Okay, two years have not elapsed. This is a valid reason for making the transaction invalid. And invalid because part of consideration was paid by jay in indian currency which is not through proper banking channels even this is also a valid reason for making the transaction invalid therefore option a would be the correct only not 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 a two and three na uh, option b option b would be the correct option happen to this okay let it be option b would be the correct answer that is only two and three next descriptive questions in the light in the lights of the applicable provisions of relevant law and precedence decide the validity of credence held by miss murudula and scope of powers of CCA. You can answer this question without reading case study. Let's see. CCA in its order imposed a penalty of 3% of average turnover of lost uh, 3 preceding financial years of B BML. Whether quantum of penalty levied, levied is within the purview of CCA. Basically what CCA thinks is CCA felt that BML has abused its dominant position therefore levied a penalty of 3% whether the three uh, levying of three percent of penalty is valid or not you can say it is valid because cci can levy a penalty maximum of up to ten percent maximum of up to ten percent of turnover of preceding three financial years therefore it has levied three percent only it is valid next whether cci is authorized to play role of administrator and judicial authority yes it is valid uh, to play role of both administrator for implementing competition act and also judicial tribunal whereby passing the orders on the you know cases relating to competition act both roles can be played by cci it has been decided in case law mahindra electric mobility okay you have to refer this case law while answering the question next CCI conducted an inquiry against seven other automobile companies apart from company 
against whom complaint was made whether cci is authorized to expand the scope of its inquiry basically the complaint was given only against particular one company bml but based on this complaint cci has conducted investigation on seven other automate uh, you know automobile companies whether it is valid or not yes it is completely valid cci can expand its investigation scope to other companies also if you read section number 19 you can find it if bml denies or does not obey the order of cci which imposes a monetary penalty then what action cci can take basically if bml refuses to pay the penalty then cci can recover the amount of penalty in the same way as penalty would be recovered as per income tax act okay in the same way how a penalty imposed under income tax act will be recovered in the same year cci can proceed to recover the penalty imposed under competition act hope that is clear next even seventh question also you can answer without reading the case study let us see considering the validity of both application moved by association of allottees of gvr in the light of applicable provisions of relevant law and precedence you are required to decide first question whether advance payment made against the allotment to be made to the allottees can be considered as a financial lending yes if you see ibc it says that amount of advance paid by allottees will be considered as a financial debt okay and he asks you to mention the points of difference between financial debt and operational debt you can mention the differences let us see how he presented the answer points of differences role of supplier in case of operational creditor the supplier would be treated as creditor whereas in case of advance given by allottee the supplier that is promoter will be treated as debtor because allottee is giving money to promoter in this case promoter will be treated as debtor hope that is clear next difference time value of money if you pay amount for goods or services it doesn't involve any time value of money but you give any advance it involves time value of money next stake of interest of fund provider in business of the party okay if you purchase any goods or services the creditor from whom you have purchased goods or services will not be having any interest in the business of person who has purchased the goods but the allottee who is giving advance to the promoter for constructing the project will have interest in that project that would be another difference and stake in the corporate data same as discussed here the allot will be having some stake in the project that is being constructed and advance payment payments made in advance for goods and services are not made to fund manufacturer of such goods or services okay if you are paying advance amount for purchase of goods or services it is not being paid for manufacturing of those goods or services whereas if you are paying advance for a project that is being constructed you are paying this advance for the purpose of constructing the project that would be another point of difference these are the five differences that you can mention between operational credit uh, operational creditor and the allottee next next question whether the making of application for claiming relief under section 18 of rera 2016 is allowed to the association of allottees as additional remedy especially after initiation of ibc basically what happens is the promoter of the project has not given delivery of the project on time okay it has the promoter has delayed the delivery of project thereby association of allottees have initiated carp proceedings with the tribunal with nclt okay basically they have filed complaint 
to NCLT. Now, in the complaint filed by the NCLT, NCLT has not granted interest, okay, for the amount that has been given by the allottees as an advance, NCLT has not ordered for payment of interest on such advance. Thereby, since NCLT has not ordered for payment of interest, this association of allottees again wants to file application with RERA, okay, with RERA under section 18, okay. Now, the question that arises is, since association of allottees already have filed complaint with NCLT, whether they can again file complaint with RERA under section 18, the answer is yes, they can file, okay. It is the remedies that are available under Real Estate Regulation Authority Act, uh, Relation, uh, Real Estate Regulation Act or in addition to the remedies that are available under other acts. Okay. It is not that once you choose the remedies under other acts, you will forego the remedies under RERA Act. It is not like that. Okay. The remedies given under RERA Act are in addition to remedies available under other acts. Therefore, the association of allottees can initiate two applications, one with NCLT and another one with uh, RERA also. Next, eighth question. Mr. Manohar wishes to sell his share of agricultural land situated in India to repatriate the sale proceeds outside India so that he can buy separate house for Jay and Natasha in the suburb of LA. Advise whether Mr. Manohar can do. Basically, what happens in the case study is, this Mr. Manohar is here, na? he inherits some land from his father. Now, if you see Section 6 Capital Account Transaction, a PROI, basically Mr. Manohar is a PROI. A PROI can, you know, hold the property which has been inherited from his, you know, legal heights when he was in India. That is allowed. Now, Mr. Manohar wants to sell this property and wants to repatriate the proceeds received to USA, thereby he wants to purchase some property there, whether he can repatriate or not. He can repatriate subject to permission of RBI. Okay. You have to mention this. You can also see how the answer is presented. You have to refer both the provisions. One is section 6 and another one is permission. Basically, as per Regulation 8, the permission is required and as per Section 6, holding of property is allowed. Okay. This is how the answer will be presented. By this, we have completed case study number 10.